Hey there, and welcome to the Beginner's Garden Podcast. I hope you're having a fabulous garden season so far. But as we shift into thinking from our summer gardens to now into planning our fall gardens, I wanted to ask you this question. Have you ever considered growing potatoes for your fall garden? This has been an endeavor that I've been working on and still trying to achieve for several seasons now. And honestly, I'm still honing my process. But because many of you live in areas where fall planting of potatoes is still possible, and many of you have asked me about my process, I wanted to share with you some of the things that you need to know. Now, trust me, I still don't have it all figured out, but I can tell you some things that I have learned along the way, so hopefully you can find success quicker than I have. So today on the podcast, first we're going to talk about why consider planting fall potatoes and who should consider this. This is not going to be ideal for all climates, so I'll talk to you about who this is for. And next we'll talk about what you need to know about potatoes and their growth habit in particular. And this will apply to you whether you end up growing potatoes in the fall or not. But we're specifically going to be talking about the growth habit of potatoes and what that means in context of growing them in the fall, because it's definitely different than growing them for a spring or summer harvest. And then finally, at the end of the episode, I'll be giving you some quick step-by-step how-tos. If after you've listened to the episode, you realize that you are a candidate for planting fall potatoes, I'm going to give you some step-by-steps on how to get started with that. I think planting fall potatoes for many of us holds a lot of potential, but it's not the easiest thing to figure out because of the way that fall potatoes grow. But I'm hoping that by the end of this episode, you'll be more equipped as you start this process than I was. And then hopefully you can fast track yourself onto success quicker. Before we get started today, I just want to remind you, if you're listening to this in real time, we are going to be having our fall garden workshop. I know we're talking all things fall gardening, and this workshop is actually one that's been very popular over the past few years, but we are adjusting it to offer some things that we've never offered before, including a Google sheet with formulas to help you know when to plant based on the projected maturity date that you need to aim for for your fall crops or based on your average first frost date, just depending on which one that you want to use. And I'm going to show you how to do all of it hands-on in the workshop. And if you're not really a Google Sheet person, it'll all be printable in the workbook, like we have workbooks on all of our workshops. But I'm excited about this because my goal is for in this workshop in the fall, you'll be able to learn how you can be successful in the fall garden and then also have tools to know the precise planting time to be able to have a better chance at success. Because I think that's the biggest learning curve here is knowing when to plant, Most of us plant our first fall gardens too late, and I'll be able to share with you when you need to plant what, and then what maybe you're too late for, then you'll know what to plan for next year. So to grab your ticket to the fall garden workshop, you can go to journeywithjill.net slash fall garden workshop, all one word, or you can check out the link in the show notes, and we'll also have a special coupon code for you so that you can get $10 off. These workshops are normally $29, but you can get this one for $19. And I hope to see you there. It's a live workshop, but if you can't make it live or you're listening to this podcast after we do the workshop, you can still get your ticket and watch the replay through the end of 2024 and have those spreadsheets and the workbook and all of that to be able to use. I'll remind you, as you've heard me talk about before, there's so much possibility and potential of enjoyment and harvest in the fall garden. And I want to give you the tools to help you make that happen in your garden. Moving on to our focus today on fall potatoes. The reason I'm doing this podcast is I've had several questions about growing fall potatoes, but one in particular caught my eye. This one I got from a reader a couple of weeks ago, and I'm just going to read a portion of the question. She said, I remember in the series that you did with Jim from Wood Prairie Family Farms, and she's talking about a podcast series. We'll link those in the show notes because they're super informative. But she said, I remember the series that you did with him on harvesting potatoes and then quickly turning around and forcing dormancy so that you could plant a fall planting. I would love to get another fall planting in, but I don't know if I'm going to have enough time. So if that doesn't sound familiar, forcing dormancy, what she's talking about, I'm going to go over all of that with you today. And to be honest, I want to give you a little bit of a caveat before I launch into everything you need to know today. And that is 
I am still trying to figure this out. I'm still trying to figure this out with my particular climate and the challenges that I have faced from year to year. And you're gonna hear all about those because I figure how better to learn than to see what I did wrong. <laughs> and so hopefully you won't do it wrong too. And also I want you to know that planting fall potatoes is very climate dependent. So keep in mind that my climate does color some of my experience and thus my suggestions. So compare what I'm saying here to what you learn from other gardeners in similar climates to yours. For reference and for context, my zone is a zone 8A slash 7B. We were 7B, now we're 8A, but honestly not sure that I don't know. <laughs> I still treat my garden like a 7B garden. Anyway, my first frost date is around November 1st. Now, if this is not, if this does not just describe you, that does not mean this episode is not going to apply to you. So much of this, even as I mentioned before, if you decide, you know, this planting fall potatoes is not for me. Like you live in the Northern tier of the US or Canada or whatever, this is not gonna apply to you, but how to grow potatoes and how potatoes grow best and just their growth habit in general, you're gonna learn a lot in this episode. So that said, let's answer the question, why plant potatoes in the fall? Why is this even a conversation? And who should consider this? Here's the main reason why I decided to try my hand at planting fall potatoes. And that is because those of us who experience early hot summers probably harvested our potatoes in June or July. That kind of depends on the climate, the springs, when I can get my seed potatoes in the ground. I harvest, I've harvested as early as the first week in June. I've harvested as late as the middle of July, just depending on the particular season. But either way, if I'm harvesting in June or July with an average storage life of most potatoes in a home context where you don't have a, a root cellar that has the ideal conditions to store, I'm still probably only looking at about two to three months of storage for these potatoes in non-root cellar conditions. And what this has meant for me over the past seasons is I didn't have potatoes for the fall and winter. And as you know, if you've been following me for a long time, my goal is to be able to grow as much as I can to last our family as long into the season as possible. And this may just be a personal thing, but I've noticed that when I'm harvesting in June and July, what else is coming to harvest that time of year is lots of produce from the garden. So it's hard for me to use the potatoes in the summer like I want to use them in the fall and winter. I, there's so many more recipes that I would use potatoes for in the fall and winter than in the summer. So that was what catapulted me into trying to figure out, okay, how can I get a second harvest of these potatoes so that I could have them longer into the fall and winter, especially when I'm more likely to want to use them in my kitchen. Another reason is because tubers don't develop well in hot soil. This is something that I really never heard from anyone until I was doing some deeper digging in some research. And it was talking about how hot soil can suppress tuber growth. And finally, when, once I read that, I was like, okay, great. I'm not a horrible potato grower because I see people that harvest these amazing potato harvests and mainly they're in the North and I'm realizing a lot of it has to do with climate. Now that's not to say that you can't have an amazing potato harvest in the South. I have seen it for sure, but I have noticed that especially when I couldn't get my potatoes planted early enough. And so they were developing those tubers more in the hot summer. And especially if we got an early hot summer, those were the most difficult harvest for me because they just weren't sizing up in hot soil. So that's why I thought that there would be potential to be able to plant a fall planting so that the soil wouldn't be too hot when those, when those potatoes were starting to develop underground. Another reason is that those of us with long seasons still have time to plant a second planting. Many of you won't have time to plant a second planting, but those of us who still have three to four months to be able to plant, grow, harvest potatoes can do this, especially depending on the variety. We're gonna talk about that. Some varieties are gonna be better suited than others. Now that begs the question, what if you are not in a long season or you don't have early hot summers. Well, in your case, potatoes will be more of a summer crop for you. Maybe you're harvesting in August, maybe you haven't harvested yet. In this case, to get a longer harvest into the fall, a couple of suggestions I'll give to you before we move on to the, the fall planting. 
is one, consider planting staggered plantings. I've talked about this concept in podcasts before, but the point is you don't plant everything all at once, but you plant every couple of weeks. And if you do that, if you don't get super long, hot stretches in the summer, then you could consider planting at multiple times to be able to get a longer harvest into the later summer and the early part of the fall. Another thing you can do is plant potatoes with different days to maturity. We're going to talk about this a little bit more, but one thing I love about the Wood Prairie Family Farm resources, and in particular, the one that I use all the time, is their catalog that they include with every order. And they list the potatoes based on how early maturing they are. So you've got some that are really early to mature, and you've got some that are later to mature, and you can plant all of those at the same time and know that you're just going to be harvesting them at different intervals. So those are some ideas for you to be able to get a longer harvest of potatoes if you don't have a super hot summer. But for the rest of this episode, we are going to be focusing on those of us who have long seasons and we also have time to plant a fall planting of potatoes. But again, if you are not in this category, you are gonna learn a lot about potatoes in general that I believe is going to help you with planting and planning your planting for next season. So let's talk about three things that you need to know about potatoes and their growth habits. And what does this mean for a fall planting? So concept number one is that potatoes don't fit neatly into an either warm season or cool season crop category. If you've heard podcasts before, you know that most of our plants are divided into warm season crops and cool season crops, and depending on what they are, depending on where you plant. But potatoes are kind of different in that way because their foliage will die in a freeze. So they're frost resilient, but they are not freeze resilient. But they also need full sun. However, the foliage will suffer in the heat. So that's been a really difficult thing to navigate. The foliage will die in a freeze. The potatoes need full sun, but the foliage will suffer in the heat. So what does this mean for a fall planting? Now let's go go through all three of those things in this category number one in that potatoes are, are not neatly a cool season or warm season crop. They're kind of both. So let's talk about what this means if the foliage will die in the freeze. In this case, when it comes to a fall planting, you want the plant to be finished producing tubers by the time your first freeze comes. Now, the potatoes themselves can stay in the ground, assuming that your ground doesn't freeze and most of, most of the time they're not, the ground's not gonna freeze that deep just depending on where you're located. If you're located where your ground freezes that deep, you're probably not gonna be planting fall potatoes in the first place. But all that to say, the Potatoes need to be mature and ready to harvest by the time you hit your first freeze. That doesn't mean you have to get the potatoes out of the ground. One year, I ended up leaving my potatoes in the ground all winter long, and they actually did really well. It was a perfect storage environment. So all that to say, you want the plant to be done producing the tubers. You want the plant to be dying back about the time that your first freeze comes because otherwise the freeze is going to kill that foliage. Now, what I mean by dying back is this is the process of of potatoes growing in general. And I've had a lot of questions about this this year. How do you know when to harvest your potatoes? If you grow potatoes, the first thing you're going to see after those stems and leaves emerge is this beautiful, vibrant, dark green plant. Absolutely gorgeous. But as the potato plant shifts into potato tuber production, you'll notice that the vigor of those leaves and stems is going to start to fade. That dark green is going to become a lighter green, a little bit more spindly in growth. Eventually, they start to yellow and flop over. And all of that is completely normal because it's the plants diverting the energy to potato tuber production. So that's completely normal. You want that process to be pretty well along where most of your foliage has already died back, which means the tubers have already finished producing by the time that first freeze comes. Now, if that doesn't happen, which is what happened to me last year when I did my fall planting, the freeze came and my potatoes were still vibrant and green. They were kind of starting to die back, but they weren't completely dead then you are going to have to look at protective measures such as a floating row cover to protect from a freeze. Greenhouse is what I did. I I did mine in grow bags and I took them in my greenhouse and when we got freezes, I would heat the greenhouse so the foliage wouldn't freeze. So you wanna consider your ability to be able to cover. 
I will say one year that I went ahead and covered with floating row cover, but the first freeze was so significant that the foliage died back anyway. So that's definitely something that you want to consider when it comes to how the foliage will die in a freeze. Now, the second thing is that potato plants need full sun. The challenge here is that even with protective measures though, the plant won't have enough sunlight to continue growing at the rate needed to produce a fall harvest as we get too far past the fall equinox. And this isn't just the hours of daylight, but it's also the intensity. As our days start to shorten, the sun starts dropping lower in the sky, you'll just notice that the growth of your plant isn't as rapid in this time of year as it is in the spring. And that all has to do with the daylight hours and the intensity of the sun. So even if you plant at the perfect time, then you are contending with the shortened daylight. So the plant itself is going to grow slower. So this was my biggest problem last year. I think my plants grew really well, but they definitely started to grow more slowly. And so one thing that I may play around with this year is to supplement with a grow light, especially as the daylight starts getting lower. We're going to see if that actually makes a difference or not, but I will say this problem is going to be very dependent on your latitude because you may live in a very southern location where your daylight doesn't dip below 10 hours a day ever and so you may not even notice this to be a problem but those of us that we do start getting shorter days that's definitely something to consider and so that brings us to challenge number three is that the foliage will suffer in the heat the potatoes aren't necessarily a warm season crop in that they love the heat they don't and so what you need to do though, because we want to have enough time to grow the potatoes, we've got to plant them early before the days get too short, but because the plant doesn't like the heat, that kind of leaves us in a conundrum. And that was the challenge that I had last year. I needed to plant at the end of July, the tubers that they, they sprouted really quickly. They started growing, but the heat was relentless through September. And that's really tough on the plant because they don't like the heat. So I experimented in a couple of ways. One thing I did was I planted a potato on in my green stock that had quite a bit of shade. So that area of the green stock was cooler, but it didn't get enough sun. And that was not a good idea because I saw the plant just reaching for the sun, just like plants do. And I ended up not having a great harvest. So shading it from the cool weather and shading it all together did not did not do well by contrast the ones that suffered a little bit more in the heat but got full sun they gave me a bigger harvest so that's definitely something that it's really hard to find a perfect solution but i'm still working on that and i feel like just observationally i feel like the sunlight is more important than keeping it cool in the early part of the growth because remember the early part of the growth the tubers aren't developing yet so that's number one, understanding that potatoes don't fit neatly in a cool or warm season category. Number two is that potatoes come in varieties with varied days to maturity. I mentioned this earlier. So the earliest potatoes to mature to be able to harvest are going to be varieties like dark red Norland, purple Viking, red cloud, Yukon gold. And then on the other spectrum, the ones that are some of the latest to harvest are going to be butte and all, bu all blue. And then there's also others that are in between that'll kind of be the mid season harvest. But what does this mean for fall planting? It means that when you're choosing the varieties to plant for the fall, the earliest potato varieties are going to have the best shot at a larger harvest just because you are working against the sunlight. You are working against time for the most part. And so you want to have that potato to be one that will harvest earlier, not later in most cases. Concept number three is that potatoes have varying degrees of dormancy. And what this means is this, the definition of dormancy when it comes to potatoes is how long after harvest they have to be in a resting state before sprouting again. When you harvest a potato and you put it in your closet or pantry or, or whatever, then you notice that it's not sprouting right away. It takes time. And each potato variety is a little bit different in how long it has to take for that sprouting to begin again. This can be 
frustrating for a fall planting, and here's why. So long dormant seed potatoes are actually really good for spring planting especially, and for any type of potatoes that you're gonna want to store because they will store longer. This is something that I started to do myself as I'm comparing different varieties of potatoes. Most of them come from Wood Prairie Family Farm, but I'm making a particular note in my notes, and I did this last year, of when certain varieties sprouted. And they varied from the end of August to the beginning of October, depending on the potato. And that's really good to know because the ones that are gonna have the longest dormancy are going to be more ideal for storing. And that would be one example is Red Cloud. It's one of my favorite. It is a very, it's an early maturing variety, but it takes a long time in dormancy before it sprouts. So Red Cloud that I have saved myself, which I'll share with you a little bit more about that, is not going to be an ideal potato because it takes longer to come out of that dormancy and start to grow. So short dormancy potatoes are going to be preferred for a fall planting especially if you are replanting your harvest from earlier in the year. So the first thing you'll want to do after you harvest your potatoes is, and most likely if you're considering a fall planting right now, this, this part has probably either already passed or already been done, so hold this in your mind for next year, is that you'll take the egg size potatoes. I'm not sure if Wood Prairie said that or if I did, but those are going to be your most ideal type of seed potatoes. You're going to take those from your harvest that you want to save as seed potatoes, and you're going to want to put them in a brown paper sack or a burlap bag and put it in the furthest corner of your refrigerator for four to eight weeks. And this is going to vary based on, again, based on the variety, based on a lot of things. It just honestly depends on how much time you have, because we're going to talk about in the how-to section how to calculate when to plant your potatoes, but you want to get them in the refrigerator to simulate winter. That's basically what you're trying to do is to simulate that resting time. Now, three to 10 days before you need to plant them in the garden or in your container or whatever you use, you want to bring them out of the refrigerator and you want to put them in about a 75 degree room that's dark to warm them up. And hopefully by doing this process, those potatoes are going to start to emerge from their dormancy. You'll start to see the little eyes poke out. Now they're not gonna get these huge sprouts most likely because this is we're trying to force something to happen in a shorter period of time than it really wants to do. But if you can see those sprouts starting to form, then you know that that potato has broken dormancy and that's what we want. Now the challenge is what if it doesn't sprout? Because that's definitely something that I've had. I've, I've put them in the refrigerator, I've done everything I'm supposed to do and I bring them out and they're still not sprouting. Well, I don't have the perfect answer to that question, but I'll tell you what I have done. Number one, you can continue to wait it out. You can continue just to, to keep it in that 75 degree room and, and hope, hope that it will sprout in time, or you can go ahead and plant it and hope for the best. Now, if you plant it and hope for the best, which is kind of what I did last year, you wanna be real careful not to overwater your soil. You don't wanna do that anyway because potato tubers rotting is, is definitely probably one of the biggest risks when it comes to first planting your potatoes. But if it hadn't broken dormancy yet, it's going to be more likely to be affected by too much moisture in the ground because there's no roots to take it up. Imagine if you just sat a potato in a bowl of water, what's going to happen, right? That's basically what's happening. So you want to keep it moist so that when those roots do emerge, it has access to moisture, but you don't want to have it too wet. That's a little bit easier to control with a container than it is with like a clay ground bed, for instance, but I've done it both ways. Still, just be careful with your watering. Now, one thing you can do, so we talked about trying to force your, your spring summer harvest into sprouting, but there's a couple of other, other options that you have. One is that most years, just depending on their stock, you can order seed potatoes from Wood Prairie Family Farm still. Now this time of year, it depends on their stock. It depends on the variety of what stocks they still have in stock. One year they were sold out by the end of June. Um, talking to him this year in 2024, I believe they should, they expect to still have stock through August perhaps, but obviously that's subject to change. But what I like about this and why I will do this is because the potatoes that you buy from Wood Prairie at this time of the year, 
is they're the potatoes from last fall's harvest. So they have been in perfect storage conditions for all of these months, storage conditions that most of us can't replicate as home gardeners. And many of them have already started to break their dormancy. When I ordered them last year from Wood Prairie, when I got them, most of them had already started to slightly sprout. They they weren't long and, and shrivelly or anything like that. They're, they're not going to send you those, but they have started to break their dormancy. So that's an idea to know that you're going to get potatoes that are primed for planting. You still want to put them in a 75 degree room just uh, j for a couple of days just to try to, to hasten that because they've been in cold storage for this whole time. But that is definitely an idea. Another thing you can do is maybe you have some in storage from your spring or summer harvest. Sometimes some of those will sprout earlier than you think. And when we want them to eat, we're frustrated with that because we're like, hey, man, they're going bad. But if they start to sprout in your storage, go ahead and plant those. I did that too last year. I had some from Wood Prairie, but I also found some in my pantry that were starting to sprout. And I was like, jackpot, I can plant a few of these. And so I was able to get more planted because I did check my storage. Another thing that you can do is you can, and I would recommend this just for containers, and I'll explain why in a little bit, but if you have some that some organic potatoes that you have bought from the grocery store that have started to sprout, you can try planting those. That's definitely your most inexpensive option, but there are a couple of things you need to know. Number one, those potatoes are not certified disease-free, and when we talk about disease, we're not talking about disease that affects us as humans, but we're talking about diseases of the soil. So there's a risk there. That's why if I do that, and I think I did test that one year, I'll just do it in a container because if it has some kind of disease, I want to be able to keep it contained in a pot. I don't, I wouldn't do that in my raised bed or my ground bed. Although that's definitely a risk that you can decide whether to take or not. Number two, you're not sure what variety it is. Now, if you buy Yukon Gold, organic potatoes you can buy those pretty easily assuming they're the same yukon gold there's been some question on actually if they truly are the ones that you get at seed potatoes but all that to say you might not have the type of potato that has a short days to maturity some of your baking potatoes that you find in the store are not going to be the ones with the short days to maturity so you may end up not having a harvest just because it takes so long so I would definitely err on the side of like the gold potatoes, the red potatoes. Those tend to be ones that are a little bit shorter days to maturity if you do that with organic potatoes that you buy from the grocery store. And I say organic also just because they're not sprayed, from my understanding, with a sprout inhibitor. So you're more likely to have some that can sprout a little bit quicker. But again, if you do this, yes, it's the cheaper option. It's definitely cheaper than buying seed potatoes, but understand that there are risks involved, but... I mean, too, if you haven't sprouted your pantry, why not try, right? What can you, what do you have to lose? Just keep in mind, do, too, though, that most of us buy our seed potatoes in the spring and most feed stores will carry them in the spring, but they're not going to carry them in the fall. That's why fall potato planting can be a little bit more challenging because we can't find the seed potatoes. I probably should have led with that. <laughs> That's why we're talking about this, this whole thing about why we would even save from our harvest or buy from Wood Prairie. It's because most of the time we're not getting those in, with our normal, normal sources. So hopefully with those three concepts, you get an idea of how to, how potatoes grow and how to make this process potentially work well for you in the fall. So with that in mind, I'm going to take you through five steps on how to go about planting your potatoes in the fall. Number one is to identify your average first freeze date. This is something that I'll, I'll walk you through in the workshop if you're gonna go to the fall garden workshop, but it's also something that you can Google is what is your first freeze, average first freeze date? Now understand those are averages. We all have freezes early or late, so be, be prepared to cover your potato foliage if need be. But just for planning purposes, identify that first date, and then count back about 90 days, give or take. 90 days, I think, would be the minimum based on, on potatoes growth habit. But 90 to 120 days. But again, also consider cover options because you may need to extend your season depending on your climate. Now, if you have time, if you are looking at your average first freeze date and you count back three months and you still have time to plant or you're close and you just want to try it, then you need to secure your potatoes. And I already gave you those options. I'm gonna run through those really quick for you. Number one, you can secure seed potatoes if they have some in stock at Wood Prairie Family Farm. They're not sponsoring this episode at all, but you can get my discount of 5% off with my code. I think it's Jill5. 
I'll, we'll put that in the show notes, but that every little bit counts, but you can do that if they still have them in stock would be to buy from Wood Prairie. Number two would be to choose sprouted potatoes from your spring harvest or number three to buy organic potatoes from the grocery store that show signs of sprouting. I would, I would try to, to lean toward that. If you can see their little eyes starting to peek out, that would be your best bet. So if you can, if you can get these potatoes, then number four, you need to plant. Plant in full sun. This is something that is so important. I've noticed this in my garden. Those root crops need full sun as much as you can give them, but especially in the fall, just because the daylight is getting lower, that sun is so, so important. So plant in full sun. But I will say, after you plant your seed, you could keep them in the shade. And this is what I did last year with my grow bags. Keep them in the shade until the leaves start to emerge. Number one, they don't need they don't need full sun until their leaves emerge. I mean, that seems like a given, but as a beginner, I may not have considered that. They don't need sun until the leaves emerge. And if you keep them in the shade, this is assuming you're planting in a container, then the the soil is going to stay a little bit cooler and is going to be less likely to dry out quickly. So that helps when you're planting. But after it starts to sprout, then you're going to keep it in full sun. So keep it in shade to conserve water. Also, when you're planting, consider adding a fertilizer. This year, I tried the Wood Prairie all-purpose potato fertilizer with my potatoes, and I was amazed at the harvest that I got. It was, you know, bigger. It's, I mean, it's not going to win any records. Don't get me wrong. I live in the South. It's still a, a challenge, but it was a better harvest than I ever expected. So that showed me that fertilizer is really important. I think the it's a four, two, six, if you're looking at other options, but again, that code Jill five can, can give you that discount on that all purpose fertilizer. It's called all purpose potato fertilizer. So keep the soil moist, but not saturated af- until sprouting. Cause we talked about the rot thing. So keep it moist, but not saturated. And then after they sprout, move them into to full sun, keep them irrigated, well irrigated after sprouting. Cause now they're going to need water, but then consider shade on the hottest of days. What that meant for me is taking my grow bags and putting them in the south facing area in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I put them in a shade just for a couple of hours during the hottest hours of the day for a couple of weeks. Now, I don't know. I, I don't know if that was the best thing to do, putting them in shade in, in the pot heat of the, of the summer, but maybe I should experiment with just keeping in full sun and seeing if we can keep them irrigated. But it might be something to look at, especially if you get really, really hot in the later part of the summer. And then step number five, and this is what I really want you to understand. This is probably the the biggest bow I could tie on this whole thing is keep your expectations in check and consider what you're doing data collection. This is challenging. At least it has been for me. And I just want to give you a a quick rundown of, of my experiment experiments and how they worked or didn't work and just so you know that this may not be like, I'm going to plant potatoes and I'm going to get this amazing harvest this year. You might, but you might just get enough to plant for next year because you are learning what doesn't work, which is kind of what I did. So year number one, I planted seed potatoes in early July, but I barely got enough from that harvest to be able to have seed potatoes from that harvest. Basically, I didn't have enough to have more than a meal. And so I just ended up saving them to be seed potatoes for the following year. And my thought is that it was just too hot in the part of the growing season that they were growing the most. They got really tall and leggy, which is an example of them like, please get me out of this heat. But that's why I didn't get a huge harvest. And then I also that year, I experimented with two different planting times. So the first one was early July. The second one was mid-August. And those actually grew a lot better. But we had an early freeze. That was the one that I covered. And the freeze got to them even though I covered And so that definitely inhibited the the harvest that I got, but I got more from that one than I did from the early July one. And those I ended up burying for the rest of the year. I think I have a YouTube video on that. If, If I do, we'll put it in the show notes, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. I buried it for the rest of the winter and then dug it up and replanted them for the next year. So I didn't really feel like that was a huge loss because I ended up getting more seed potatoes out of it than I planted. So I multiplied my seed potatoes for the following year, but That year I learned that early July for me was too early, middle of August was too late. So last year, or was it the year before, I planted late July, yeah, it was last year. Last year I planted in late July in seven gallon grow bags and I had a lower yield than expected 
expected despite moving those grow, grow bags in the greenhouse. Now I did have a couple of challenges. Number one, for the first time ever in my gardening experience, ants started eating the stems in the greenhouse. It was later in their growth, but it was definitely while the tubers were starting to develop. So I think that made a difference. And then I was having trouble keeping those grow bags watered early on in the process when we were getting really hot. I remember at the end of September when I was in Brooklyn, I remember being really worried that my husband and son weren't going to be able to keep those grow bags watered because it was heat indexes were still in the hundreds at that point, which was actually not common, but still I, I'm, I'm afraid that even before I left for Brooklyn, I was having trouble keeping them watered. So it's possible that I just was not able to care for them as well, but I still had a, a decent harvest, just not as great as I had expected. But what I learned with that is that I felt like that planting time was ideal. So this year I'm adjusting a few more things. I'm planting in late July, but this year I'm using 15 gallon grow bags. The ones that are lined, I shared those with you on a YouTube video recently on how I, I plant in those, but I also use drip irrigation. And I actually just harvested potatoes from those that did really great for the spring planting. I'm gonna do it again for the fall planting, but I'm hoping with those 15 gallon grow bags, we'll have a better success with keeping the moisture intact because of the lime grow bags and because they're larger and hopefully maybe even keeping the soil, soil a little cooler in this, in this summer. That's my goal. And I might try again in a raised bed. We'll see. And then I will definitely be using drip irrigation this time. So I don't have to just depend on myself remembering to hand water. So those are the things I'm going to be trying this year. And again, as you have heard me say, I'm still trying different things to try to get a little bit better each year. Some crops in our gardens are going to be like, we plant them once and we have lots of success. Some crops are going to take a little bit longer, possibly several seasons before we can really dial in what is going to be the most successful, especially when we take into consideration the nuances of our climate. And that's something that you really can't overestimate. So that's why I want you to understand that it's important that you keep your expectations in check and just consider if you're just starting this, consider this data collection so you can learn how to get a little bit better each time. But the way that I look at it, like I said before, is even if my, my goal is to get a harvest to be able to eat in the fall and winter, of course, but even if I just get more seed potatoes than the one I planted and I can save it for the spring, then it's still a win because that those are seed potatoes I don't have to order again in the spring. So hopefully this gives you a little bit, I know this is a long episode for planting fall potatoes, but as I was researching this or, or even just outlining it, I was like, oh, they need to know this and we need to know this because these are things I didn't know when I first began. And I would love to hear from you if you plant potatoes in the fall. If you are watching on YouTube, you can comment and let me know what your climate is and what your experience is. I would love to learn from you because I don't know of a whole lot of people who in my area are planting and harvesting fall potatoes. So it's really hard for me to know that. And if you are listening to this podcast, then send me a DM on Instagram, e even the day that I publish this, or even if you're listening to it later, at the beginner's garden. And I would love to hear your experience because I love collecting experience from people who have different climates. And it helps me to be able to share it with you on this podcast that could be able to share with other people that have different climates than I do. And we can all increase in knowledge as we try to grow more of our own food. Hopefully this was helpful for you. And if you're inspired to grow a fall garden with or without potatoes, if you've hung in there this long, but you still know that fall potatoes aren't for you, still a fall garden is for you and i hope that you'll embrace that and i hope that you'll join me in the fall garden workshop i, I love this is probably one of the, the my favorite thing is to inspire and equip people to grow a fall garden because it is one of the most rewarding experiences as a gardener and i think once you get a little bit of a success you'll agree so hopefully i will see you in the fall garden workshop again journeywithjill.net slash fall garden workshop and if you come live we'll have a live q a and we'll just have a whole lot of fun talking about fall gardening and if you can't make it watch the replay you'll still get some great resources to help you be more successful in growing your fall garden thank you so much for joining me today and sticking with me with it from this list a little bit longer of an episode on potatoes but i hope it's been helpful for you and i hope you have a fabulous day